Hey, welcome back to another um, episode of the uh, channel here. Um, today we've got some coverage that we're going to be covering three top major um, topics today, and that is going to be um, the mysterious blobs that scientists found down in the earth that are from ancient cities and ancient ruins, proving that there is um, some type of divine divinity type of life going on. Also, um, evidence and proof that uh, Joe Biden actually reversed that $6 billion fund transfer to Iran. Um, and then also that um, a little bit of information about what we know in numbers of the death toll through the um, Gaza and Israeli attacks um, there um, in what's going on. So if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel, follow, like, and uh, share. So let's get right into it. Um, first of all, we have these mysterious blobs here. And these mysterious blobs um, have actually been, um, they've been talked about um, for a while in the scientific community. Um, but with that being said, um, these blobs that are um, specifically within the Earth's crust um, are actually, um, over the years, have accumulated into two separate blobs. They were high levels of iron caused um, in the border of Earth's mantle core, the scientists um, have proposed. Um, the testing theory is based so far back in time and so deep under the Earth, it's incredibly difficult to find. But they do know that within these blobs, there exists um, ancient life um, that, they, um, that they have no idea what it's doing there and how it's surviving. But ultimately, there are two blobs. And um, yeah, I just thought that that was kind of interesting because if they have... Uh, scientists are supposed to know everything, right? And and there's so many people that base their faith and aspect on life based off of Scientologists or Scientology or the belief in science when they actually, they don't know everything. Um, but um, moving on, getting towards that at the end of the um, video here, we're gonna get into a little bit of uh, what those two blobs could be and what they could mean. Next, we have Biden, um, who quickly um, reverses the release of $6 billion to Iran. Um, and that was as of October 24th, 2023. I mean, that was probably the best thing that he could have ever done, right? Re reverse the release of the $6 billion. Now, um, if in fact he did do that, then that would be great. Um, but if he didn't, then, you know, then there there might be some repercussions to that um, through a united front um, of all the nations. Um, there might be some some funding of war crimes going on there with Biden. Um, Biden's already under some real hot water right now, um, such as receiving like forty thousand dollars from China, um, getting paid um, by China. Uh, $40,000 in one bank transaction. Several others are also um, in the books being looked at, but definitely this guy's a puppet. And I'm pretty sure that we all know that. Um, comment down below if that's what you think. So um, recently, uh, the direction of $6 billion from the US to Iran has complicated the foreign relations uh, in regards to Israel-Hamas war. In exchange for five American hostages imprisoned in Iran, President Joe... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Back up here. So, they're saying that there are five American hostages held in Iran from the terrorist Hamas group but Iran, Iran says that they have nothing to do with terrorists. They don't support terrorism. How did Iran get five American hostages? There must be some support there, some definite connections. Let's just clearly say that Iran is a terrorist country and the government there fully, fully supports 
the Hamas um, actions. Um, because basically Hamas does the work, they capture the people, they give them to the Iranian government. Iran has the five hostages. But because the money is being transferred to Iran, uh, they'll release five, five hostages. Uh, just kind of a little bit of a coincidence there, don't you think? Biden then changed his decision to block Iran from accessing any of those funds. Iran might be a little upset now. Um, Iran initially earned $6 billion from the sale of oil to South Korea, yet Iran could not retrieve that money due to sanctions implemented in 2019 by former President Donald Trump. Uh, thus, the money stayed frozen in a restricted bank account in South Korea. In order to grasp the severity of the situation, one has to understand how much $6 billion really is. To quantify this amount, uh, you would have to have spend $5,000 a day for 3,000 years. Um, so with that being said, even so with that money being reversed, it comes down to how is Hamas being able to afford thousands and thousands of missiles being shot on a consistent basis towards Iran? I mean, the missile, I mean, you can clearly see the missile goes up and explodes up in the air, and, and then that's it. That's, that's the missile. Seems like a lot of waste of money to support a terrorist organization that has no idea how to, how to send out that stuff. Um, and it's amazing Israel's defense. Um, it's definitely a sad situation where they are at. Um, although most of people cannot relate um, and should not even try to relate to the damage and the atrocities that have happened in, Iraq, in, in Israel. Um, and around their borders. Um, it, is, it is a different beast. That is a different beast there, my friends. Um, so with that being said, just kind of something I wanted to throw on out there. Biden supposedly release, uh, reverses $6 billion, although skeptic uh, about that. Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I think the $6 billion went through, and that's how they were able to fund the thousands and thousands of missiles that went through. Next, um, a little bit of what's going on here. We have the Israel uh, current as of today, um, November 1st, 2024. Uh, Israel's killed, uh, and this is according to the Al Jazeera. Um, they, have, they have really, uh, Al Jazeera has, I mean, you could take it with a grain of salt, but it's definitely something to think about. Um, when Israel was attacked blindly by Palestine, by Hamas, um, it, it, was, it was blindly. So basically, if, if, if an intruder or a criminal breaks into your house, hurts you, hurts your family, you're going to want full revenge on that person or that criminal, right? Common sense, right? You want to take everything that they took from you and more if you can, if you're in that mindset, obviously. Now, when it comes to running a country, the, the level of, of demolishing that Hamas did and how they did it uh, to children, uh, that was way, way below the belt. Uh, and so now... Israel is retaliating to get even more than what was actually taken from them. Most of these Palestinians that are killed are actually Hamas terrorists themselves. Terrorist cells, terrorist leaders, stuff like that. So Israel, uh, at least 14, at least 1,405 uh, had been killed, injured, 5,431. Um, Palestinians, at least 22,000 are injured and at least 8,796 are dead. Um, Israel has confirmed through other sources that I have, um, have actually verified that as of today, November 1st, 
Israel has successfully annihilated 11,000 Hamas soldiers. That is confirmed by a Israeli militant that um, we pay that I pay attention to, um, and I closely watch. Um, and his name is Amir Sarfati. My wife actually watches him. Sometimes you'll see here in all my videos. Uh, so we, you know, we collaborate back and forth. But nonetheless, she uh, showed me a lot of what Amir Sarfati did and is talking about because he's like there in the front lines. Um, he's in he's in Israel and uh, he. Uh, he he is part of the military there, and he he has a lot of information about that. So that's that's uh, they're definitely moving forward. They're strong. They're very positive about where they're going and what they're doing. Um, and if you don't know who he is, go ahead and check him out. Amir Sarfati. Uh, he's a um, he's a Israeli militant, um, Jewish. Um, speaks at a lot of churches and stuff like that. If you're interested in that, go ahead and check him out. Um, so with this right here being done, um, with the, um, the, where the battle is right now is it's actually, um, in the horse's bridle. So where all of the militants are pushing back over by Haifa, um, they're actually down, they're actually down by the, um, Megiddo. Is where this battle is being struck at where a lot of strikes are happening um, they're pushing back further and further into the um, Palestinian territories and in other um, Arab areas um, closer towards I mean everything is going to lead back to the, the, the headquarters of Iran um, so the closer that they fight to Iran that's where the that's where the main uh, attacks and terrorism are going to happen now anything outside of that obviously there's going to be I mean they're obviously going to meet somewhere and where are they going to meet they're going to meet in this valley of Megiddo which happens to be in translation Armageddon now I'm going to get a little bit into that don't 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 freak out okay it's it's something that we're definitely looking into um, and watching very, very closely, not on just a religious or skeptical type of um, analysis, but also in general. We want to know what's going on. Is there something in the back of our minds that resonates with us that, hey, there's something, there's something big going on here. It's not just, it's not just, you know, a bunch of weirdos thinking that, you know, the end of times are coming. But it's actually happening, and there is a lot of proof that shows where this is happening. So things to really pay attention to are 180 miles of blood red rivers, blood red uh, something liquid uh, or blood running on uh, down a river, down a sidewalk, down the streets, something that is 180 uh, uh, miles watch out for that when you hear that know that that this is what i'm saying is right things to also watch out for are um more talks about megiddo and jezreel valley jezreel valley and megiddo are side by side and that is the area of which armageddon is going to happen all this stuff is leading there we have at the front lines we have russia who's just moved in from the Black Sea, um, crossing over the, through the brigade bridge that they have there into the ocean to come around to the side. So basically, here is where, here is where the Black Sea is. So the Black Sea is right here uh, on the top right. So they basically, all they have to do is just go through Istanbul. They have a, they have a, a portion here that they can travel right through here through Istanbul untouched no one's going to bother them they'll come right through that they'll come right through the sea of Marmara and they'll come right through uh, Galibolu right they'll go right through that they'll come right on out to the uh, Aegean Sea and the Aegean Sea 
will bring them all the way down and into this area here. Now, this area here is going to be the area which where the um, Israel is at, and they can once they once they get through that portion there, it seems like a long trek, but trust me, it is not when you have a fleet of 27, 30 warships uh, with thousands of nautical miles available to them to come right down into here, right through Cyprus, and you know make a front to here. Um, if you doubt that, okay, if you doubt that, 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 uh, that traveling, that journey, just think of this. China, China here, way over here, has released their ships to go all the way down around Hong Kong, all the way down around uh, Vietnam, through Malaysia, through Singapore, come all the way through the Bay of Bengal, uh, through the Lekadiv uh, Sea, through Arabian Sea, um, and then come all the way up towards the Gulf of Aden, and now they're sitting here in the Red Sea by Jeddah. And what are they doing waiting there? They're right there. They're right here waiting at Israel. Check it out. Check it out. It, uh, China is already there. U.S. is already there. Russia is on its way. So why is this important? Well, if we take a look at this zigzag lines here um, along the, uh, the, the Sea of Galilee on the, uh, let's see here, that would be the west side, the west side of Galilee, um, north of, northwest of Galilee, um, up to Rain, Magar, um, Araba, Tamara, and Kamel, right? So um, one thing that you have to know about this particular area is Nazareth is here. Nazareth, check this out. Nazareth is right here. Okay. So within this area, Right now, there is a lot of military attacks going on in Galilee. And that's where Nazareth is. That's where the Sea of Galilee is right there. Uh, and so this is known as what's called the Horse's Bridle. This green area here is called the Horse's Bridle. Why is that important? Let's go ahead and take a look. Right here in Revelations 14.20. Now, before you back up, there's a lot of great information here. If we just, if we're looking at evidence and proof and uh, stuff that we're looking for to relate to, let's relate to this. Revelations 14.20, what does it say? And the winepress was trodden outside the city, and the blood flowed from the winepress as high as the horse's bridle. So basically, as high, right? So you're going from a point to high. Um, now, with that being said, you're looking at 1,600 1, stadia, which equates to 180 miles. Now, the wine press is related to blood, um, the squeezing of blood. And the blood flowed from the wine press as high as the horse's bridle for 1,600 stadia. Now, the NIV has a different um, version of it, but we're going to go through all of them. They were trampled in the wine press outside of the city outside of Jerusalem, which happens to be Gaza. And another situation about Gaza is, I'll get to that in just a minute, um, in the NASB, the wine press was trampled outside the city and blood came out from the wine press up to the horse's bridles for the distance of 1600 stadia. CSB version, then the press was trampled outside of the city and the blood flowed out of the press up to the horse's bridles for about 180 miles. Now, no matter which Bible you're reading or what type of uh, translation you're getting, it all corresponds with one another and it all is pretty, pretty close, pretty close to each one. Now, with that being said, what is 180 miles? 
let's take a look. Now, where is the battle going on right now? Let's take a look. The battle is going on from Gaza, right? Gaza. And so it's going from Belt Hanon, or yeah, Beit, Beit Hanon, ha, uh, ha, Han, Hanon, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce that. Um, but it's going from there, and it's going for 180 miles up to the Valley of Megiddo, or the Horse's Bridle. The distance between here, between here, here, and here is 180 miles. Right there is 180 miles between here and there. And so the battle is going from, started from here, going up to the horse's bridle. Why does that important? Because it says at the wine press trod outside the city and the blood flowed from the wine press as high up to the horse's bridle for 1600 stadia. Now, if that's not enough, um, where was where was Jesus born? He was born in the city of Nazareth. Now, within this city, um, the city is is a beautiful city, um, very well built. But why it's important is because where Jesus came before he will also come in like manner so he came here to nazareth first jesus of nazareth now he's coming back to nazareth and his feet will touch the mount of olives and basically take everybody with him that believes in him so now with that being said um are you right with god are you right with Jesus to make sure that this type of stuff ain't going to happen to you that that you'll be that you'll be safe you may experience some hard times but you'll be safe in the end eternity you'll be safe um, so now what I would like to try to do is um, assist in your protection when that time comes and um, welcome you to the family of God. So let's go ahead and read this uh, verse here. I'll read it slow and you just follow after me. If it's in your heart and you confess with your mouth, that's all that matters and you can rest assured that you are where you need to be. Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner and have broken your laws. I recognize and I understand that my sin has separated me from you. I am sorry and I ask for you to forgive me. I accept the fact that your son, Jesus Christ, died for me, was resurrected, and is alive today, and he hears my prayers. I now open my heart's door and invite Jesus in to become my Lord and my Savior. I give him total control and I ask that he would rule and reign in my heart so that his perfect will would be accomplished in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Guess what? If you just said that prayer, I want to congratulate you. Thank you so much for saying that prayer, meaning it from your heart, saying it with your mouth, and confessing it. Now, no time is better than now to get right with God. If you don't believe in God, I'm sorry. That's between you and God. But ultimately, everybody will meet God. Um, and he'll say, hey, you didn't, you didn't know me? He'll say, oh, uh yeah i i um you do exist <laughs> Ooh. uh yeah so 
Jesus is going to say, oh, yeah, shoot, you know, um, you had a chance while you were alive. And uh, so now you're, you're, you're out, you're in your conscience um, and you don't have the right to, to, to believe in me now because it's too late. Now it's, now it's me to believe in you because you don't believe in me. And depart from me, you workers of inequity, I never knew you. You never want to hear those words ever, now or for eternity. So by saying this prayer of salvation, you have locked in your soul that you are saved by grace and grace alone. It's God's grace that he sent his only son so that we may all be forgiven and um, that we may have eternal life with him in heaven. So thank you so much. Welcome to the family of God. Please follow and subscribe for more videos like this. I do a lot of little random things going on um, and try my best to um, develop my channel here. Um, not all of it is like this. A lot of it is about um, uh, entertainment, stuff like that. But I do try to do news, entertainment, a mixture of stuff. Ultimately, this right here was what was on my heart, and this is what I needed to talk about. So thank you for watching, and until next time, God bless you, and welcome to the family.